Hi everybody and welcome to a very special episode of The Big Review Ski and I'm delighted to say that I'm joined by the Oscar winning director of Amy Senna and the upcoming Diego Maradona documentary. Asif Kapadia, how are you doing today mate? I'm good, good to be here man. Uh, yeah, if you see any tension between the two of us it's because Asif's a Liverpool fan he's still celebrating I'm the Champions League win. I'm not tense at all. <laughs> You're just twisting <laughs> it, I'm just happy. Um, yeah, loved Maradona I have to say, really, really enjoyed it, saw it yesterday. Um, He's such an interesting character in terms of his facets of his life. What was it in particular about the time in Naples that drew you as a filmmaker? Because there's so many stories about him, I guess you could tell. I mean, in a way, when you're making a film, you need a good character. You've got to cast well. Um, and then really, you're looking for drama. You're looking for events, things that happen that are interesting and dramatic and, and something that you can show. And having researched all of his life and all of the kind of different periods from when he was really young in Argentina all the way through to Barcelona, to everything that happened in his latter part of his life. It always seemed to come back to the most interesting point. And the place where he became famous for being the best footballer in the world was Naples. Mm -hmm. The place as a location that's most interesting is Napoli and the city and the team and the people. Um, but it's also where all of his problems really became problems. Yeah. All of that happened in the seven years that he spent in Naples. Yeah. You make a, a kind of point throughout the documentary, there's kind of two sides to his personality. There's Diego the kind of the mama's boy, the street fighter from the, the slums of Argentina. And then there's Maradona, the entity he creates, the third person person he talks about. Even as a kid, you were like, as a teenager, he referred to himself as Maradona. When you met him, what side did you think you saw more of? My feeling about it now is that, you know, you've got this spectrum from Diego here to kind of Maradona at the far end there. From the people that know him, who knew him all the way through his life, they would say, he swings now just on that end of the spectrum. You know, the young, vulnerable kid that arrived in Naples, maybe he's not around anymore. Maybe that's a different person altogether. He's put his body through so much, so much time has passed. And perhaps it happens to all of us when we get older. We become, literally, physically become someone else. Mm. Um, so I would say I met the nice version of Maradona, but I definitely, it's really difficult to go back to the guy that he was there because once you've been through these experiences, you can't go back. Yeah. Once you've been through the pain and the troubles and done what he's done to his body, and in his case, he's died many times, and then he comes back again. Uh, it's really hard to go back to the innocent, vulnerable kid. Did you get a sense that the guard was up, or was he kind of trusting from the off, from the first interview, or was it him figuring you out? I think the guard's always out? up. I, yeah. think, I think he's very aware of journalists. He's very aware of people interviewing him. He knows, he thinks he knows, you know, what you want. He'll give you the odd kind of headline. So I may ask a question something quite personal and he'll give me a brilliant answer but he'll be about Seb Blatter yeah. or he'll be about something entirely in, irrelevant and you're like but that's not really what my question was and until I guess he sees the film he doesn't really know what I'm doing because the way I'm working is very different the way Senna and Amy are put together in the same way Maradona's been put together entirely using archive and we just have his voice it, the construction is quite unusual mm. and it's very personal and it gets quite deep and I guess he's used to doing a lot of television interviews or audio interviews or radio interviews, which maybe haven't gone quite as deep or researched themselves quite as much as we have. Yeah. I'm curious about your approach. You mentioned the archive footage. Do you go into a project, whether it be Amy Senna or this, with kind of a, a core thesis, let's say, about what you want it to be and work around the archive footage? Or is it, I'm curious, what was it you wanted to show of Maradona that maybe the world hasn't seen before? Because he's so popular. Yeah. Was there a particular light? At, at the beginning, personally? honestly, the more I do, the less I know. And I'm quite happy to tell everyone. Mm. So I will go into a project saying, what we're going to begin with, we've got Diego Maradona and we're going to make a film and we're going to run out of money at some point. Right. So give me two years and we will come back with something that's going to work. Mm. And I kind of trust myself and I trust my editor and the team and the process. And really, we're lucky. I'm lucky that since Amy onwards, after Senna, really, People just say, OK, we'll let you do your thing. So I will, we will lock ourselves away. And what I do is I talk to a lot of people. I interviewed about 80 people for this film all over the world. Um, I have thousands of hours of footage and archive that we found, our brilliant research team found. And we look at it all on the computer and we start playing with it and we try to find what's interesting. Where are the story moments? What are the dramatic moments? We try to construct real events into kind of classical movie moments. Um, so we're looking for a kind of restricted time frame. We're trying to get under his skin. What is it really about? Where's the drama, as I said earlier? With Senna, he had a very obvious external rival, Alan mm. Prost. With Amy, it was you know, the story of her and her relationship with her family, her boyfriend, with the media, with fame. 
Maradona, it was harder. He achieved things, but there was no obvious person that was there all his life. He didn't really have friends that were there all of his life, but he had certain relationships. And what was really there was him. Mm -hmm. And often, if there's no tension and no conflict, he creates it. So I suppose that's where the kind of almost Diego versus Maradona idea came from, that whatever happens, no one tells him what to do. He decides what to do, whether it's good, bad, a piece of genius, a bit of cheating. All of that comes from something within him. Yeah, there was that lovely line, football's a game of deceit, which is kind of encapsulates his career. There was two scenes in particular I loved. Your decision to dwell on his face at the Napoli Christmas party was like, he has everything you would associate with Maradona, women, drink, drugs, and he looked trapped and afraid and like a prisoner. And the other one was when the Gomorrah took him onto the streets of Napoli as a show pony, essentially, or in Naples. Uh, you, you stay here and you're going nowhere. Was there anything when you were looking through, it was like, okay, now I go, I understand exactly what this film is, this conversation or this particular moment for you. And you're like, okay, the penny's dropped. This is my film. This is exactly what it is. Funnily enough, you mentioned a couple of kind of visual moments. And I think that shot of him all on his own at that Christmas party is really powerful because this is a story of a man who's super successful, like you say, rich, brilliant, won everything. Everyone wants to be around him. Everyone wants to touch him. And he's quite lonely. Mm and vulnerable, and, and it's quite sad seeing him like that. So th that, that is a really one of my favourite moments because it's so sad. It's a very powerful cinematic moment. But the moment that for me that changed it was when I was interviewing someone, Fernando Signorini, his trainer, oh, yeah. who knew him better than anyone, knew his body and his mind better than anyone. And it was really, Signorini was the guy who came up with the idea of there was Diego and his Maradona. And once I heard that, that was like the light bulb going off, saying, I think I can do something with that. I think I can show that. And what I liked was it was different to the other movies that I've made. Mm. And more difficult, more complicated, but somehow it made sense of this enigma of Diego Maradona. You know, why is he doing these things? Why is he on TV at his age kind of giving a finger to all of the crowd at a football match in the World Cup when he's there as a FIFA delegate? <laughs> What's going on? And then you think, actually, that's because that's full on Maradona, you know. Yeah. And at other times, he'll be the sweetest guy, most charming and really a real gentleman. You go, that's the Diego part of him. Do you ever get the sense that there might have been maybe regret on his end when you were chatting to him that, like, it's almost like you see the right thing to do and he just deliberately subverts expectation because that's him. Did you ever get the feeling that, like, maybe in his personal life or his professional life, he just made the safe choice that he would maybe prolong his career, he might be more happy in his personal life. Do you ever get that sense, or is he just committed to the character of Maradona? I, I fear it's the latter. I think he's almost become like, you know, the cliche of himself sometimes. Mm. You know, he will do the thing because everyone expects him to do that. He will do that. And no, I'm, I, I don't know if he's really sat there and looked back at his life and mm. thought, you know, maybe I should calm it down and, you know, sit down and open a pub in Ireland and you know <laughs> he it just doesn't look like he's going to do that you know that's not him that'd be weird uh, if he uh, did do that yeah, that'd be that'd, that'd be, be mad, mad, Ireland. there's a movie you could get him on here he's a big film fan I have to say um I was hoping to do it at some point by showing him the film you know sitting down and showing him a cut of film just the two of us watching it on his tv in his living room and pausing it when necessary and talking about stuff mm. because I, I had one final interview left yeah I was, I was told I had nine hours worth of interviews, three sets of three-hour interviews, and I saved one up because my intention was to make the film, show it to him. He might not like certain things. I'm like, well, you tell me what happened. There'll be other moments of him in Naples where he may have forgotten. <laughs> and just seeing it again and seeing his kids when they're real, literally when they're born and when they're babies. He's off on a plane next day. Yeah, yeah playing against Milan and scoring you know, two days later. So I was hoping that would be the point where he might look back at his life and just go, wow, one, I was great, wasn't I? I did some amazing things, but maybe I made a few mistakes along the way. But try, you know, typically with Diego Maradona, it doesn't, things don't go to plan. So I haven't been able to get him to lock down in order to show him the movie, so he hasn't seen it. Uh, you mentioned there a while ago your approach. What I love about the three documentaries you've done is uh, you never use talking heads. It's always uh, it's very cinematic. The archive footage is key. Uh, is that just your own personal choice or is it you're thinking, OK, I do have to tell the story through visuals or um, I, I just find I mean, that my, interesting? My background is in um, making fiction films and I've done quite a few feature films before I made Senna and they're very the visual. Great, yeah. yeah, they're very visual. They're very little dialogue. Um, I come from an art school background. I come from a fan of being, I'm a fan of pure cinema. Um, and so I love world cinema and European films and kind of, you know, Japanese movies or whatever. So for me, the idea is to make films in the style that I want to watch. 
and um, making them in the original language when necessary, you know, so people speak in their own voice and not kind of trying to make it easier for English speaking audiences at times. And so for me, the idea came from the idea that I want these characters are movie stars. Senna's a movie star. He should be on a bigger screen available. Amy as well. I want that to be seen by an audience. I want these to be collective experiences. And Maradona's massive. So I want to be able to go to Naples. I want to go to Buenos Aires. I want to be able to watch it in Ireland, all over the world, where football is loved, where he is known, but with an audience. There's something about that collective experience that I think is really interesting and important. And the best way to make it cinematic, for me, my style of working is to always start with the visuals. Mm. Tell the story with pictures, because that's what cinema is. Then, when necessary, you can hear a voice. But the voice doesn't lead. The voice is there accentuating and explaining and giving a context. And that's just my style. Other people do it really well. Other people are in their own films. You know, they're the person recording mm. the sound on camera, and they're going on a personal journey. The way I've kind of fallen into these documentaries is, even though they are personal and my fingerprints all over them, I try to take myself out of the movie. I want Ayrton Senna to narrate his life story. I want Amy Winehouse to tell her story. And if she can't tell it, then her lyrics will tell it. And in this case, I want Diego versus Maradona to kind of explain the story to you and not for it to be, you know, a talking head of, you know, yeah. some great footballer now saying, I love Diego Maradona. He was fantastic. I remember when he scored that goal against England. You're like, who cares? Yeah. I'm not interested in that. That's not my style of filmmaking. Yeah. yeah. Uh, going forward, uh, I know they kind of, I think Senna genuinely, along with, you know, the Netflix explosion, HBO stuff, kind of revived the genre. And uh, personally, I absolutely adore Senna. So congratulations on that. Uh, the kind of the long form storytelling process for documentary stuff seems to be very popular. Is that something you've ever considered for maybe in the future or even for Maradona's approach? Uh, would, would you ever consider doing something like that? Maybe a 10 part, 5 part, whatever it takes? Series? I think it's happening. You know, it's going everywhere. And I think in the future that will be the go to place. That's kind of why I thought of this film, Maradona, Diego Maradona, as being like the third part of a trilogy because it was made for the cinema and because the idea was to make the tough challenge of condensing and conflating his life into two hours. The easy thing for me is to say it's going to be 10 parts. You get loads of money, you do it. I know that I would never watch it. Mm. And so I want to make things that I, as an audience member, would go to watch. And I'm like, you do the hard work, you condense it down to two hours, and then I'll go and watch it. But I often watch TV shows and I never get to the ending. Mm. You know? And it's just like I'm watching them going, this is great but it doesn't have to be that long. Yeah. <laughs> and so I'm, I'm, and also I know what I'm like when I'm watching stuff. I genuinely, I'm watching TV. My wife's going, this is great, you should watch it. And I'm watching it, I'm going, I really need a biscuit. I need a biscuit. Have got any chocolate? <laughs> Let me go and find some chocolate. And I wander off and I'll come back and I'll go, let's just see what's going. Oh my God, so-and-so's got injured. You know, I, I just, my mind wanders. Yeah. And then I get sleepy and I doze off. And I just say like, I want to give it the time and the effort and I'm not the greatest viewer yeah. at home on my own sofa. But at the cinema, I, I love and I respect, I turn off the phone and I pay attention. And I'm hoping that we can just extend that idea yeah. a little bit longer. Is there anyone uh, in particular you might be interested in terms of telling their story? Uh, nowadays, whether you sports, entertainment, or uh, anyone? Right now, I have to say, I don't have a subjects in mind. I'm not asking you to go back straight to work. I'm asking you enjoy the yeah, film. Thanks, you know, right? Give it a <laughs> no, uh, but I tell you what, my gut presently is just the state of, politics around the world and politicians and what's going on. I just think there's something going on right now that if I could focus on that and try and show the connections between these people around the world and the terms and the language and how people are trying to separate us and make things worse because it's in their interests. If I'm going to do something right now, I feel like it's going to somehow have to do with politics. Well, thank Christ we've got football to distract us from all this If we didn't have cinema and, and football, where the hell would we be? We'd be probably in the dark, crying probably here on our own, just yeah. talking about like football matches and me crying anyway, because Liverpool... The problem is, League. that's how they use, you know, <laughs> a lot of dictators famously use sport to control the masses. So even that can become a problem. There you go. There's your next film. That's to cheer you, you up, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> awesome. Thank you so much for taking the time to come in. And if uh, Maradona out in cinemas this Friday, thoroughly urge everyone to go and see it because it's just as good as the other stuff you've done. And uh, maybe even better. Well, there you go. There you go. Winning Thank Oscar. You. Thank you so much for that. Awesome. Really you. appreciate it. Cheers.